cold, so um, I'm going to do my best. I may get a little frog in my throat every once in a while. So, um, so today we're going to go through, we're going to do Qigong exercises as we always do in every session. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit more about Xing Yi and the five element theory. And I think every, every session going forward for the next few weeks, we'll do one medal just to make sure that we understand how to do them and to reinforce what we already know. You know, it'd be a shame to, to go through this uh, five element um, uh, theory as it was as it relates to Xing Yi is to, is to practice all of this stuff and without really getting the forms down. So, you know, we're gonna get, you get more out of it if you understand the forms you get to get feel more comfortable with them rather than just do it once or twice and you know you forget it and it uh, and it becomes kind of history. So forgotten history. All right, so um, that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna get right into some uh, Sun Style Tai Chi. And I wanna go into a little bit more detail on the differences between um, between brush knee and repulse the monkey for sun style, which is very different than, than other styles. It took me a while to kind of figure it out. And so I want to share that with you um, because the feeling is different and it's the feeling of these movements that's really important in Tai Chi because intent, the mind intent is, is so important in Tai Chi. If you do Tai Chi without a feeling for these, for these movements, for the power and intent of the movements, then you're, uh, you know, you're not getting as much out of it as, as, uh, as you should be, as at, least, at least as I think you should, you should be. So, um, so let's get started. Let's kind of warm up a little bit. Let's rotate the shoulders down and up and back. Guess what? No surprise, surgical movements. All of these Qigong uh, exercises have circular motifs to them or spiraling motifs to them. And of course, a spiral is just a more complicated form of circle. So now I'm going the other way. This Punch your shoulders up as far as you can and around. Let's loosen up. Okay, and let's exercise the joints, fingers, finger joints. So we're splaying them in and out, in and out rapidly. I did all these exercises this morning, so I'm all warmed up. I'm sort of counting, I'm at about 30. Maybe that's 50. And yeah, let's do 10 more. Good. Let's kind of shake it out. Take an opening breath. And one more. Breathing in. Come down, breathe out. Nice and slow. Good. Raise the hands up, push down. Relax the shoulders, sit up straight, raise the crown. Breathe in and out, breathe naturally. Tuck your chin in, bring the hands around facing you and pull in. Breathing in and push out. Relax your, your elbows and you're gonna bring it in and out again. 
Exhale, inhale, reach all the way back. And close, collapse, breathe out. In, out. You want your elbows pointing down at an angle, not too constricted, in like this. You don't want it either in like this or too far out. The elbow should always be pointing down. I shouldn't say always because of course there are exceptions. Generally, the rule is elbows pointing down toward the knees. In, out. Open, close. Turn the palms facing down and push down. Good. Bring the hands up, open and close. Try to imagine that you're pulling, like you're pulling a, a elastic band apart and now letting it collapse slowly. Relax, turn the palms in opposite directions, pulling one off to the side, elbows down. Palm about three, four inches over to the right shoulder. And you're blocking down with the other hand. And now come back, rotate the other way. Keep your elbow down. The arm at a nice circular motif. Breathing in as we extend to the side. Breathing out as we come back to center and continuing to the other side. Turn and look. Turn and look. Another way of doing this is an exercise called white crane cools wings. Um, I'm standing up just to show you uh, how to do it. So we're doing this. Uh, I. There's, there's a movement that looks like this. Notice that it's very symmetrical. The fingers are pointing in toward the body. All right. This is a block. All right. And this is your a temple block protecting your head. If we come back, rotate back to center, we can go the other way. This is a move that you see in Yang style. Okay, now let's form, let's play with this ball, this energy ball.
So people often ask, uh, well, how do you hold your hands in Tai Chi? And you can try to relax your hands and fingers, but not completely. You want to have a little bit of tension, a little bit of structure in it. They say that it's the hands take on the appearance of the roof on in these Chinese pagodas. You ever seen the tiles? They're shaped like this. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of re, you kind of relax the fingers, but not completely. And, and at all costs, you want to avoid um, extending the fingers and, um, uh, you know, in a in a motif and a you know in a way that um, uh, where the where the fingers are tight. I don't know any any other way of putting it. So you don't want to you don't ever want to lock a joint. So if my fingers aren't relaxed. I'm locking the joints of my, my hands. And that's what you want to avoid. So you want to, if you want to start out that way, you can start out with locking the joints and then just relaxing them. And then if you go to the other extreme, it would be kind of more like this, where, where the, you can, and you can feel the energy. If, if, you, if you hold your hand extended out completely like this, where the joints <clears throat> are fully extended and locked, <clears throat> and you just kind of do a body scan. Um, what, what you will sense is a lack of feeling in the rest of your body where all the energy is here now. And when I mean energy, what I mean is your feeling, your awareness <clears throat> is blocked by the energy being trapped here in your hand. Now, if you totally relax on the other hand, what you feel, if you just relax and let your mind Go, let your mind wander uh, around this is you'll feel a kind of empty empty feeling of uh, feeling a weakness almost in the rest of your body and so what's going on here is the energy in the first case is being locked into the position in the second case it's actually dissipating out of the body metaphorically speak, uh, speaking and so there's this kind of happy medium. And, and I like to start often, it's really hard to gauge these things in, unless you go to the extremes and experience the extremes and then find that middle ground. And that's so often uh, important in so many other aspects of life is that living at, at one extreme or the other is a dangerous kind of place to be. Uh, and so you kind of want to be that middle ground is where you want to be. And that's especially true for Tai Chi. Now, you can do the same thing with your posture. A lot of times in my classes, people say, well, how do you stand at Tai Chi? You know, uh, you're supposed to be completely relaxed. Or are you supposed to be standing at attention? Well, the way to get into a good Tai Chi posture is to go to the extreme. And the extreme, in my mind, is what's called a military posture. Uh, and it's not, it's not a cultural thing. If you look online and you look at the, at the, in China, at the military, they're uh, very rigid when they're at attention. Uh, they almost look like they're machines because they're very disciplined troops, all right? And so they're trained to stand at attention. Uh, and the reason for that is in a, in a very formal uh, style that has very that's that's locked into a kind of rigid form, and the reason for that is in the military everything has to be totally controlled. So you know the idea is to get rid of, to diminish or to quench individual choice, right? You want to make everybody follow orders, and so the way to do that is to is to demand that people stand in a very rigid um, uh, kind of posture. So if you if you Stand up straight, you put your shoulders back, 
tuck your chin in, stick your chest out, and get into that military posture. And now just relax, just relax and let everything kind of collapse, but not completely. Now you're in that perfect Tai Chi posture. It's kind of a state of, of uh, or awareness, a state of readiness. If you go to the other extreme, uh, you lose all of your structure and you lose um, the ability to connect all the different parts of your body, uh, physically speaking. So, um, so you might play around with that. And one way to do it is just use the hands instead of using the total body. All right, so that's kind of a diversion. So we take this circle and turn it around and then let's pull to one side. We're gonna to pull to the side that the lower fingers are pointing to. And kind of keep rotating from one side to the other. The other thing I wanted to say about that subject of relaxation, not total relaxation, controlled relaxation, it, it has a really profound psychological effect. Hence the mind-body connection. I have students that can, cannot relax when they do Tai Chi. And um, and people that have been, been doing this a long time with me uh, have, a, have a lot, some people, very few, but some people have a lot of trouble doing them. They do the movements fine, but they don't do it in a relaxed way. Coming back and opening and closing. And come down. And now let's push. One side and the other. Palms facing out, fingers facing forward, pulling and pushing. This is also a strike, watch, See, as, the, as the elbow goes back, there's a point here on, on the elbow, it's a very effective uh, uh, point for striking something. Actually, there's two points back there. So if I rotate around my waist, I'm generating energy going around and I'm focusing all that energy into the back of my elbow as I push back at the same time, smacking around forward. So this is an excellent um, exercise. The lower back and also has uh, some serious martial applications to it. Okay, good. And now let's, um, let's move down to the feet and uh, we're gonna do the kick and punch routine. Starting at the ready position with the heart of the fist up, elbows back, fists at the waist. Gonna rotate, punch out and kick. And two more. And two more. Good. Moving down to the feet. Put your toe down, lift your heel and rock back and forth.
and now rock the side of the foot from one side to the other back and forth. The other foot. And side to side. Okay, good. All right, let's see if I can show you something I've got on my screen. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but let's try it. Yeah, all right. Can you see that on, on the screen, this five element diagram? Not yet. No. Yes? Yes? No. 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 How about now? No? No. Hmm. OK. OK, well. I was gonna show you these, the relationship between the five elements um, with respect to their generative qualities and destructive qualities. So we're just to deal with metal today. And um, metal chops wood. So there, the destructive aspect of, of metal is that it destroys or chops wood. And uh, metal also, um, is nourished by earth. So earth fortify, fortifies um, uh, metal. And um, some of the other characteristics of metal is it's associated with the, um, with righteousness. Uh, as far as the zodiac is concerned, um, the yin quality, zodiac quality is, uh, or animal is the rooster. The young animal was the monkey. Um, other characteristics of metal are white, autumn, dryness, the um, planet Venus, and the animal tiger. And as, uh, as the five element theory applies as well to medicine, uh, metal is associated, the two organs associated with uh, metal are lung and intestine. So in each of the five elements, there are two um, internal organs associated with them. And in the case of uh, metal, it's lung and, le and, and, um, um, and the large intestine. The, um, the uh, uh, metal is also associated with the sense of, of smell and the taste would be that of spiciness. Uh, don't ask me why they, those associations are made in that way, but uh, that's, if you're interested, those are the details. Um, so as far as this class is concerned, we're interested in the martial, uh, the use of, of metal as a, uh, as a strike in Shen Yi. And uh, we're gonna go through it again. And uh, we're gonna start with the opening metal. All of the five element forms start out with an opening metal form. So metal is the kind of predominant uh, element in Ching Yi. We sit up straight. We take an opening breath up and down, fingers pointing toward each other down to the lap. And then we'd make two fists forming the knuckles together, turn the fists over so that the eye of the, the heart of the fist is up. We take the right hand First, right fist come up under the chin and out. We bring the left fist on the crop of the right elbow. We open both hands up, extend the fingers out. Taking the leading hand that's sticking out, 
we turn it over and block or cross and down, bringing the hand into the waist. As we take the other arm, extend it and turn it over and strike with the heel of the hand. And so this hand coming out is comes up and down. It's a, it's a cutting motion. As you imagine that the heel of the hand is the uh, edge of a, an ax. All right. So we end up like this. So the fingers of the lower hand are pointing toward the Dantian. Notice that there's a bend in the elbow and we're facing forward like this. Now, to continue with metal, we simply make two fists. We bring the outer fist around and down. Now notice I'm bringing it with the thumb down and now up like this. So it's a circular motion up under the chin and out. Other fists in the crock of the elbow, open the hands up, block across, come up and out and strike. So if I do it sitting from the side, it would look like this. So you, you can't see the left side. I'll change and do the other side later. Make two fists. Bring this hand down, just down, up, under the chin and out. Fist on the crack of the elbow, open the hands up, block, block or cross and come and strike and metal strike, chop. Make two fists. In and out. Fist on the crack of the elbow, open the hands up, block across and pull down as we extend the hand out at 45 degrees turning and striking with the heel. Ready? Two fists, strike out, fist on elbow, chop. Make two fists, in and out, fist on the elbow, open the fingers and strike. Okay, good. Any questions? Now, if you were doing this standing up, you'd add another dimension to it, and that would be a lunge, because Ting Yi is very, very straight back and forth. Um, and you would be doing this at the same time, you would lunge forward like that. So it's a very powerful move. It would look like this. And so you'd be adding your body moving forward uh, in that direction, constantly attacking. But this uh, Xing Yi, in my opinion, lends itself really well to the sitting position. And um, what I like about it is when it's done in the sitting position, when it's done slowly, it becomes a form of Tai Chi, really. It's repetitive, it's slow, it requires you to really use your mind, to focus your attention on the movement, and to feel that energy in a relaxed state, okay? So it's very Tai Chi-like, uh, and it brings another dimension to, um, uh, to your practice. So these different Ch internal Chinese martial arts have different personalities. And Tai Chi is very powerful and explosive. Uh, if you do it slowly, you still feel that energy. It's a different energy than you feel when you're doing Tai Chi. So in my mind, it, it, it's complementary. The two are very complementary. And you practice them together depending on how you feel. Um, depending on your mood, how you're feeling in the particular day. So that, that's what I do. 
And, um, and then you add some of the other internal Chinese um, martial arts, and they, have, they too have different kind of flavors and different kind of personalities. All right. So um, now let's get in, into Sun Style. And um, we're going to, I'm going to check the time. It's 12 o'clock, so we have plenty of time. Okay, so what I'd like to do is go through the set and um, maybe stop at, at the end of each or maybe some of the forms, some of the movements, and explain in a little bit more detail on how to do them correctly, all right? And you can stop me at any time, hit your space bar and ask questions if you have any questions, all right? So let's go ahead and try this, all right? Let's sit up straight and get into that Tai Chi relaxed state, chin tucked in, crown raised, feet on the ground, relax the shoulders, take a few deep breaths, make sure you're not holding your breath. And now let's raise your hands out, arms fully extended. Again, don't lock your joint. You want a little bit of, a little bit of flex uh, in the joint as you bring the hand up and your elbow. Now in this style, the fingers are pointing down like tentacles uh, from a jellyfish, all right? Pointing down. A lot of other, some of the other styles come up like this. Other styles, Start this way. This one starts this way with the hands together, facing each other, fingers pointing down. At this point, you, you bring the fingers pointing out. So here, this symbolizes a state of emptiness with energy totally drained from the body because the fingers are pointing down. And as you come up, the fingers rise up and you feel, as the fingers come up, you feel like you're drawing chi inside of your body. And you're bringing that chi up and down into the dantian area, dantian area here. So it's symbolic, but it works. Bringing it up, in, and down. Pushing out, not fully extended bringing the hands in and open and close. Now notice the subtle use of, of and not so subtle use of circular movements here. If you look at it from the side, you see that circular movement coming down and the circular movement coming up and in and open and close. And not only are they circular, but they're sigmoidal. They have this kind of a motion to them, a torsional motion and movement to them, which adds more energy to it. And so this is a very simple move, but in some ways it's kind of complex, right? Because there's a lot of detail to it if it's done correctly. It's two circles but they're complex circles. They're not, they're sigmoidal as well as rotational. Coming in, pushing out, coming in and opening close. Single whip, turning the, the palms facing out, pushing out and extending. So here again, you want to push out just a few inches and extend. And when you extend, you don't want to go too far, right? You don't, you don't want to go too narrow or too far, a little bit past the shoulders. All right. Preparing for cloud hands, cloud hands right. We bring the right hand down, lining it up under the left elbow. So this is just setting up. This too is a rotation. See, it's, it has this kind of feeling to it setting up and then switching. And so if you look at how this is done, it's one continuous motion. One, two, three. The way I teach it is set up under here and switch. But you're at a state now where you can do this in one fluid motion. 
And now you're beginning to turn and switch and turn and switch and turn. Don't go too far. Keep the hands vertically aligned. Let the race, let your waist do the movement. And at some point, doesn't matter which side, you're going to start to rotate the lower palm up and out and in, inside, up and inside and around as you turn to the front, coordinating this movement so that all the movements come together at the same time and open and close. Okay, now you can stop if you want. You can stop, put your hands down. So this is, after the open and close is a good point to stop if you like, and just check yourself, check your, check your feelings, check your breathing, check your posture, and check your mental attitude as well, all right? Nothing wrong with that coming up. Let's go ahead and open and close again and go on to the next one. So the next move is gonna be a brush knee left. To do that, we rotate the hands over and we turn to the side. What we're doing is winding up, getting ready to then turn at the waist as we reach across and either grab a hand and pull it in or block a kick or a punch, then open hand, thumb down, at the same time pushing forward right through the, uh, right through the shoulder line. And it should be at the level of the head. So to do this properly, you want to bring this hand across. As soon as it reaches this left shoulder line, you want to bring it in. And I like that Xing Yi posture. So I like to bring it in just like metal ends up with this hand that blocks, come around, comes around, it blocks this way and comes around and it locks in with the thumb attached to the hip and the fingers pointing toward the Dan Tian. Never do this, right? Bring it in with the palm down. I like this structure rather than just doing it this way. But this is fine, as long as you don't have your elbow in too far. So you wanna keep your elbow, you wanna keep your body um, flexible and you wanna keep it open as much as possible, but not too far open or you become vulnerable. So here we end up like this, and of course, the next move is play the loop. Here again, a circular oblong movement. Hands relax. We turn the lower hand up, the upper hand down, and now we're going to do this move. And this move here is a deflection that has a kind of rotational aspect to it. So it's not just this way and this way, it's, it's the bottom hand goes out and in, the top hand goes in and out, kind of like a magician waving his hands around. It has this kind of movement to it. This is actually a move. In um, in Quang Ping Yang style, is it's hard to it's hard. I wish I could demonstrate this. Somebody comes in, you can block. Then they then they attack with the other hand. You block down like this. So you're constantly blocking down, block, block, block. And then as you open them up, you make a fist and you punch into the into the into the ribs or the kidney. And so when it's done, it looks like this. One, two, three, four. And this pulling back and, and punching drives a lot of energy into it. So that's called ring the moon, but you don't see it in this style. Um, but the point is that this deflection has that same, uh, that same kind of movement, right? This versus this. Can you, you, can you guys see that? So, so you're going to see a lot of, uh, even be, it, you know, there's a lot of sim there's a lot of continuity between the different movements and between the same movements and different 
forms and different styles. Okay. So in a sense, we're not doing anything new. We're just doing it in, this, in a different way. And we come back, make two fists. If we want, we can leave this open. I like to leave it open, but this is going to be a parry, grabbing a wrist, pulling it aside as we punch over, punch under. I like to leave parry with my open hand because it's more accurate and punch over. Can also punch under. We open the hands up, faint back. Now this is a defensive move, feigning back, calling block. Splitting force, elbows down, bringing the palms down and in a circular motion, pushing down and up. There are ideas to push somebody back. And if you push them back using an upward motion, um, it, it, I'm gonna pretend you're doing that to me, see, without falling over. I'm gonna go like this because you're pushing up rather than just pushing me back. So if you were to push me back, I could recover. But if you push down and up, it's breaking my root. It's forcing me to go up on my toes and therefore lose my connection with the ground. It's called breaking your root. And so that move makes the push much more effective. If your intention is to push somebody away and hopefully they fall over. I mean, if you're going to push somebody away, that'd be good if they fall over because then you can turn around and get away easier. All right. Um, so that's the idea here is it's the movement is down and up again. Again, it's that kind of rotational movement. So um, and that's why it's done that way. And then we bring the hands in and we open and close. And that's just a way of kind of kind of getting back to um, a starting point for the next move. Okay, now, um, so we've done that. <clears throat> and if we wanted to end up to 12 movements, we would just terminate or end Tai Chi by bringing the hands out and down, which essentially is the mirror image of the starting move. So instead of coming up and in, we're coming out and down. Now you can stop there if you want, but we're gonna go on. So we're gonna do another single whip and if it's done in the sitting position, it's pretty much um, symmetrical. If it's done standing up, it's a little bit different because you're moving this way, sideways. Now, if you want to add a little symmetry to this move, you can. And it's a really cool feeling, the single whip. I started out teaching it this way. But if, if you look, if you think about the martial applications, it also involves a movement to the side because what you're doing is you're grabbing an arm and pulling that arm out to one side or the other as you put up your arm <coughs> or hand in the other direction and stop that person's force, usually at the neck. So you're, you're striking and pulling at the same time. And so if you were going to do that single whip, the first time is what you would to do is you would shift to the right and then come back to the left for cloud hands. The second single whip you would do would be you shift as you sh as you separate the hands, you shift to the left. So the movement looks like this and shifting to the left. Try to avoid this. We want to try to keep your your torso up straight. So you're shifting your your torso to the left, maintaining your posture in upright position. Now, if you were standing up, that's exactly what you would do. So here you're using your buttocks as your feet. As you extend, you shift to the left. And now you come back to the right and you're ready to line up to the right. So now you've got your, you've got your, <clears throat> how can I describe it? You've got your weight over to the right, ready to turn and pull to the left. And so once again, shift out, lean to the right, come back to the left, set up on the right-hand side, shift 
and cloud hands in the other direction. And let's stop, bring the lower hand up, turning at the same time and open and close. If we want, we can stop here. Stop anytime after open and close, it's a good point. Okay. What's next? The next is going to be a brush knee in the other direction, in this case to the left, my left. First one was to the right, this is to the left. What do we do? We fold the hands over, we turn, set up, right fingers and left elbow. We wanna have this hand cocked here at the shoulder line, not out here because there's no force, little force going in this direction. Here, what we wanna do is come right through the shoulder line. So we'll bring that in close. <coughs> Sweep around, either grab or block. We get to the shoulder line, the, the blocking hand or Grabbing hand comes in again to the waist, palm down. The left hand in this case strikes out to the face. So it looks like this. Play the loop. Now you know the top hand has to come down, the bottom hand has to come up. So you don't have to remember that. Nice circular rotation. Two deflections, turn the palms over, lower palm up, upper palm down, deflect, sigmoidal, turn the palms over at the same time, deflect, sliding them past each other, sigmoidal. And remember, a deflection has this energy, not this energy. This is not a deflection, that's a strike. A deflection is a torsional movement, which is intended to deflect something aside using very little force. One, two, three, or you can do it as many times as you want. You want to end up on the left side this time, make two fists, or leave the front hand open as I prefer, parry across and punch, or parry across and punch under. Now, notice, the, notice in my hand, again, it has that um, pagoda roof, structure, it's relaxed, yet it's got some definition to it. The fingers are not together, they're apart. Uh, and the hand is relaxed, but not totally relaxed. All right, and that's what this block should be like. So I don't wanna have, I don't wanna be uh, extending all, all of my joints because if I, if you, if you do this, go ahead and try it. If you if you flex your joints out completely, I mean, really put a lot, of, a lot of structure into this. And then go ahead and put your other hand out and try to hit it or the back of it. Now relax your hand and, and repeat it. You can feel, I can feel a lot more with my hand relaxed than I can with my hand like this, right? If, you're, if you have a lot of tension in your hand, it's hard to feel things with your fingers. That's why you don't grab something like this. You grab something, you're gonna grab something, you grab it with a relaxed hand. Same thing if you're paring the side, you wanna feel your connection with, with the, uh, and the force as you do it, you wanna feel it. It's not just done passively. You, you're feeling all of this if you're using this in combat. You're feeling another person's energy. All right, so. Make two fists, punch across or punch across, open the hands up, come back, calling block, again, down and up and push, come in and open and close. You can stop here if we want. So now we're gonna go to, to um, the um, man uh, walking, straightening out his clothes and to set up for that, we do one more brush knee in the same direction. We turn to the left as we did before. We do a brush knee. Now we turn the palms facing each other. We pull the right palm up, the fingers pointing down and then out like we're pulling a gun out of a holster and push it forward and connect with the fingers of the left hand 
on the inside of the right wrist. We fold this wrist open like a book. We bring it in and up under the chin. This is a circular motion and strike out. At this point, those that left the left palm with the fingers attached to the right uh, <clears throat> wrist are going to guide all of these movements that we're going to do from here on out. We bring the bring it in and we bring it in and out, and now we rotate over to the side, turning as much as possible. Bring it right palm up under the chin like we're holding in a platter, still connected to the left fingers. We turn forward. This is a motion that's kind of like a lariat, like a rope going around like this, gathering energy, pushing out and striking. Bringing the hands in and open and close. Good. So the next move you're gonna do to remember it, it's gonna do punch under elbow. But to set up for that, we've gotta do another single whip to get in position. So in this case, it helps to kind of think ahead. So the punch under elbow is going to look like this. To get to that point, I'm going to do a single whip. And I'm going to do a single whip the same way I did it last time, by leaning left and coming up right. And now I'm going to make a fist with the right hand. And I'm going to bring it around in a circle and punch like this. Okay, so it's here, I'm gonna make a fist. I'm gonna bring it rotated around in a half circle to here. And at this hand that's out here, I'm just gonna turn forward and use it again to parry across. Now, this one is not done this way. You don't have a choice here. This one is done this way. And so the movement looks like this. One hand is coming out here to block and the other hand is coming around and coming and striking. So what does that look like? Two circular movements. Generating energy, the waist is driving this force, see? One, two. Using my waist is kind of like a whip, like the, like the center of a wheel to generate energy, get that wheel turning a merry-go-round, and then I get off the merry-go-round by punching. Do you think of yourself, you're on a merry-go-round, you go around, 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 and you jump off, what happens? You start tumbling forward in the direction of the, of the centripetal force. And this is what's happening here with these hands and rotating around in this direction. All right, so one is going clockwise and the other is going well, it's kind of hard to, one is going clockwise in the um, horizontal plane, another one is going clockwise in the same plane, actually. Two clockwise rotations, strike under the elbow, herring across. All right, now here we go. The next three moves look a lot like brush knee. Uh, and this is what I want to focus on in this for the rest of the session. Look a lot like brush knee, but they're called repulse the monkey. And the reason, the only difference is in the way you set up and the result. Okay, so in if you think think about it in terms of intent, in brush knee, the intent is to block or cross and strike. But in repulse the monkey, the intent is to grab and pull. And how that happens is all in the setup. So the first brush knee, you set up this way and turn. Now you're ready, you're set up to rock, block across and push. If the intent is to grab and pull, all right, after the open and close, what you're going to do is, is you're going to turn and pull in like this. 
right? So you're going to reach out. Imagine if somebody in front of you, they reach out to strike you. You reach across their blind side. So you, they strike with your with their right hand. Okay, you reach across, you grab the elbow. You grab the, the wrist and you pull them back. So the move, instead of setting up this way and doing this, the move is gonna be, is gonna be this way and back. And then you, you, you end with a brush knee. So all it is is the repulse the monkey part of it is just the setup, which looks a lot like, uh, like brush knee. And so here's what it looks like is we did punch under elbow. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and set up and pull and finish with the brush knee. Now we're gonna reach across and grab and set up, pull back and brush knee to end it. And once again, grab, grab and set up and push. So in one case, um, the brush knee setup is uh, after open and close, the brush knee setup is uh, is is loading up on, on one side or the other side. In the other case, it's actually kind of a pulling sensation. He's reaching out, instead of just reaching back to set up, you're reaching out to grab and you end up in the same place and then continue to con with, a, with a brush knee. So let's think about that as we do it, all right? So we're gonna open and close, all right? I'm sorry, we're going to punch under elbow. All right. And then we're going to punch under elbow. And then we're going to grab and pull back. And grab and pull back. And grab and pull back. and end. All right, so if I were gonna do it from this, from this way here, it would be grab, right? It would be grab, would be grab, be grab. Any questions about that? See, what I'm doing is, grabbing and throwing, grabbing and throwing, versus blocking and pushing. So it took me quite, a, it took me a long time to figure that out. Um, sun style is very tricky. And um, what I like about it is it doesn't use any wasted motions or movements. It's, um, it's a new derivative, relatively new style that takes uh, all the features of, in Sun Lu Tang's um, mind anyway, takes all of the strengths of, of um, the other styles and blends them into a style, a new style which has a more of a martial uh, intent, but at the same time, it's very soft and gentle. It's really interesting that it's got those two qualities, martially very strong, yet gentle and easy to do. Okay, any questions? No, Sifu. Probably, maybe that's more content than you want, than you <laughs> want to know. Um, if you want, if, you, if you're interested in how these are really used, it's much easier to go online and, and watch somebody uh, do this with a partner. And you'll see immediately how the difference between brush knee, uh, the brush knee move and the repulse the monkey move as, as it's done in sun style. Okay.
So next week, water for Xing Yi, and um, we'll get back into it and uh, learn the next movement of the sun style set that we're that we're engaged with. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you, Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye everybody. Bye.